Today, we will see how can we shift exponential functions. Now, on the previous lesson, we were concentrating on logarithmic functions, but now we're going to concentrate on exponential functions. Now, again, the idea here is that we can shift, and again, shift is just another fancy way to say to move. So we can move functions by either adding or subtracting numbers in the specific places. Now, when we're talking about logarithms, we move up and down. If we were adding or subtracting outside the parentheses, left or right, if we were adding or subtracting inside the parentheses. Here, for exponentials, it's a little bit different. But we are still trying to move the graph in those four directions, either up or down, left or right. So now, today, we will have a small presentation again. So here we have nothing because the graph is not showing. So, oh, there it is. So now here we have the graph. So in blue, we have the original graph. We have it right here. This is how, if we were graphing this function, this is how the graph would look like. So this is the function for the exponential. Now that we have the function for the exponential, we will see what happens when we either add or subtract numbers. Let's first start to see what happens either add or subtract inside or outside the parentheses or outside the exponential. So let's see, let's start with subtraction first. Notice what's gonna to happen to our graph as we start decreasing numbers. Notice that here, the numbers are decreasing. Notice what effect it has on the graph. The graph starts to have a slight shift downwards. So it behaves the same as a logarithm. If we are subtracting numbers outside, then the graph is going to move down. So notice what happens. Well, let's go back to zero. Here we have zero again. That's the original function take a guess as to what's going to happen if we move upwards. Well, I think you guess it right. If you add numbers outside, it's going to start moving upwards now. So if you add numbers outside, it doesn't matter if it's an exponential or logarithm, it's going to have the same effect. So here, that's what we have written down here. If you add a number, Let's try to do that in red. So if you add a number outside the parentheses, then the graph is going to move upwards, which is just like we showed on the, on the later presentation. Now, if you subtract a number outside, now the graph is going to move downwards. So it behaves the same as a logarithm. If you add outside, it moves up. If you subtract outside, it moves down. So now let's see what happens when we don't decide to do anything on the outside, but now we do it with the exponentials. So here, again, here's our parent function. We went back to zero. So this is the original function. So now let's see what happens when we decide to move our graph, when we decide to add numbers on the exponentials. So if you add a number inside Notice that here, we're adding numbers on the exponential. As you add numbers on the exponential, the graph is going to move to the left, which you can think the exponential as the parentheses when it comes to logarithms. So if you add on the exponential, the graph is going to move to the left. Let's go back to the original, which is zero. Here's our original again. Now, notice what's happening when you move or when you start subtracting numbers on the exponential. So notice that when you subtract numbers on exponential, the graph starts to move to the right. And that's exactly what we have here. Here. Now, if you add numbers in the exponential now, the graph is going to move to the left. 
which is kind of like what we saw on logarithms. But with logarithms, we were talking about parentheses. And if you decide to subtract numbers inside the exponential, we're going to move the graph to the right. So four shifts outside, up if you add, down if you subtract. In the exponential, when you add a number, you move to the left. In the exponential, when you subtract the number, you move to the right. So now again, here we have another. We will see how we can look at the graph with the original. And how is your graph looking after making the shift? So here in blue, we will have the parent function again. This is the parent function. Here's which function we're graphing is too small. So here the parent function is e to the x, just like we saw it on our small presentation. Let's graph the original e to the x. It's always going to have this shape and it's always going to pass through zero and one. So here we have our function. We know that the original is going to look something like this. And again, right now we're not too concerned about the whole, how is my function looking? It's just, we're looking as to how is it going to be moved? So here in blue, we have our original. So the blue here is the graph for e to the x, but we want to graph e to the x plus one. So here notice that we add in a one on the exponential. And if we go back here, when you add a number in the exponential, your graph is going to be moving to the left. So we're going to get a blue point here. And we're going to move this point one unit to the left, which is about right here. And now we're just going to imitate the shape. So here in red, we have our function y equals e x plus 1. So notice that it is the same graph, but it just has a small shiftment of one unit to the left. Now we have example two here. We're in example two. Let's graph the original, which the original is always going to pass through zero and one. So let's always do the original in blue. Okay. So here's the original graph. We're talking about e as an exponential, and the exponential always has this shape. This is fine. So here in blue, we're graphing y equals e to the x. But now our task is to graph y equals e to the x plus 5. So notice that this plus 5 is not being added in the exponential, but this plus 5 is being added outside. So let's go back to our rules. So when you add a number outside the parenthesis, your graph is going to move upwards. So here in blue, we have our original. We're interested in graphing this, which is going to be the original moving five units upwards. So now here's our point. Let's move it five up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And let's just replicate the shape here. Let's just write what the new function is. And that's pretty much it. All we're really concentrating on is what direction is your graph moving and by how many units. Now, here's your entrance ticket. 
In your own words, describe the different type of shifts we have for exponential functions.